So this is my new mount I've been sent to play with. This is an AM3 mount, it's from ZWO. I've been sent it by First Light Optics, who sent it on behalf of Astronomy Now for me to review so I can tell you how well it performs. So these mounts use harmonic motors, strain wave motors, and they've got so much torque that you don't need any counterweight to carry the telescope. You don't even need to balance the telescope. It literally is plonk and play. So this mount was supplied by First Light Optics. It was supplied to Astronomy Now. Astronomy Now has sent it to me for review. So if you think you're getting a mount like this, and let me know your thoughts, put them in the comments, and it'll be really interesting to see what the community's view are of these new mounts. So in this one, I'm gonna give you my thoughts having used the mount, well, several times over the winter between the storm fronts as one storm front leaves and before another one arrives, we sometimes get a night or two of clear skies. I've also used it a few times for solar observing when the sun's been getting a bit higher in the sky. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'll set it up, I'll talk you through my thoughts, and then we'll do a part two where we'll actually set up and we'll do a night of observing. So we've got two new packages to unpack today. These are just arrived from First Light Optics. And as they always say, may contain clouds. So inside here we have two smaller boxes. So that is the AM3 case. So we have the ZWO AM3 in its case. This is a soft um, case, it's not a hard case, it's a polystyrene case. AM3 hand controller, Allen key hex wrench. mount the head itself the hand controller cable and a USB something or other cable a peer extension quick start guide That's the pier extension. A couple of screws. Another hex key. And another tripod adapter. And a TC40 carbon fiber, lightweight carbon fiber tripod. Some sort of hard metal spiky feet if you don't want to use the soft rubber feet. Screw the thing on. And a thing that goes in there. And a stone bag, sort of canvas tray, instead of an IP tray. Instead of a hard metal tray, they come with a, a canvas tray. And last but not least, you get the quick start guide. A test report with all the periodic error. And that's a full 360 
and that zooms in as it's quite windy I shall put that back in there so the first thing to note is the instructions that come with this are pretty minimal so it's a little bit of head scratching but I'll show you how I set it up and then you can use this for your own setup so this is the TC40 carbon fiber tripod I've left it with the rubber feet on um, and there is the hub so to unlock the hub you press that and that then pops out there's the pier extension now i don't know why zwl sellers without a pier extension so if you put them out on there the telescope's on here you run that risk of it striking the tripod leg so you need to have some sort of separation to bring it up yet this is an optional extra when quite clearly it's an essential part of it so that goes in there lock that in that goes on like so so the next tricky part and it took me a while to work out how to do this is you've actually got to get the silver um, adapter thingy from the tripod that was in the tripod and that's going to go in there and then the head goes on top so that unscrew these three screws So you'd have noticed when we unpacked the AM3 from its case, there isn't a power supply. So even though it's a four figure price mount, they don't supply a power supply. So I just had to order another power supply. Uh, well, I actually say order. I bought a second hand one from a, someone in the club who was selling one, had a spare 12 volt, uh, five amp brick. So I'm gonna plug it in now. So this is why you need a pier extension because when the telescope's pointing up at the zenith, the camera end, the telescope end, the eyepiece end is gonna strike the tripod legs. That's why you need a pier in the middle. Otherwise the telescope end is too close to the tripod. So one thing you do have to be careful of is that with a lightweight carbon fiber tripod and a telescope on top of it, is it is kind of top heavy. So some people do suggest bring weights, weights and barbells or dumbbells or rocks or bottles of water in 
the canvas tray. So having used the mount over the winter and into the spring, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on how well it performs. And like always, I'm not being paid to do this review. This isn't sponsorship. So I can tell you truthfully how I think about it. So first thing is the mount. The mount is really good. I've really enjoyed using it. On top of that lightweight carbon fibre tripod, it's just a pleasure. I can carry it out from the shed, I can be down here observing, setting up on the garden for solar observing in moments. Pick up the tripod and just carry it out just as the train goes past. And of course with the carbon fibre tripod with no counterweights, it's really light, it is so portable. It makes it great for a travel setup. If you haven't got a permanent setup and need to set up, this is definitely worth considering. The motor as well, the mount itself is really rugged. When I had my obviously much, much cheaper Skywatcher AZ GTI in Florida when we were at the Winter Star Party, we had quite windy weather, the wind was coming in off the sea, and the mount, the telescope would vibrate in the wind. You could see it in the distorted stars, you could see it in the eyepiece as well. And of course, when we've had windy weather and it's been clear, no problems, the mount doesn't even notice it, it is much more robust. That's what you're paying for, a much more capable mount, much higher payload capacity, much more tolerant of windy conditions. Great performance per kilogram, really impressed with that. Don't need counterweights, you know, lightweight carbon fiber tripod, perfect for if you haven't got a permanent setup, or you're using it for travel or as a grab and go for quick sessions in the garden. So be aware that the tripod, the tripod is pretty low. Um, if you want to use it for visual observing, I strongly suggest you get a taller tripod. That eyepiece is going to be really low. So of course that's not a problem for when you're uh, imaging and you're not looking through the telescope and you don't have to put your eye to the eyepiece. But if you do want to go visual, then yeah, that tripod, you are going to get a taller tripod. Now I haven't tested it here, but the mount actually goes into altazimuth mode, so you can actually use it as a visual setup in altazimuth as well, mode as well. I haven't done that here, and I'm sure it works just fine, but I haven't reviewed that here. A couple of other important issues as well. They supply the pier, the extension, as an optional extra. It's something you can choose to buy or not. I would recommend it is pretty essential. You don't want the telescope end, the focus around the camera, the eyepiece, striking the tripod. I think it's pretty much essential. Some people try and slide the telescope as far forward as you can. I, I think it's worth having the pier. I can't believe it's not sold as part of the, 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 the you know, sort of base package. And likewise, the power supply. I've got the mount, brilliant, all set up. Can't use it, and I've got to go and get a power supply. So do bear them out in mind as well. Do need a pair, and you do need to go and arrange your own power supply. And if you do go to a, you know, dark sky site, you're away from a mains power supply, you will need your own power supply. You can't move the mount, you can't do anything with it at all without power. So if you are observing remotely and you're going to a dark sky site, then do make sure you have your own power supply. You need that 12 volt, five amps supply. I quite like the hand controller. It's very different from the traditional um, you know, sky watcher or celestial hand controller, what we're all used to. You have the joystick, you slew the telescope around and it has a go home button. That's all it has. So everything is controlled either on the phone or on your laptop. So you've got to set that up before you can use it. But I really liked the planetarium style display. I like the graphical user interface, being able to control the telescope off that as well. So I quite liked the app. Uh, I have tested it using the laptop as well, but you can't do a go-to, you can't enter any commands using the hand controller. It literally slews and it's a go home button. That's all it has on the hand controller. So I'm left with a conundrum. Should I go for this mount? or should I return it back to First Light Optics and say thank you very much for the review. Let me know your thoughts on the comments. Let me know your thoughts for you know, a grab and go setup, travel setup, you know, quick sessions if you haven't got a permanent setup. But I must say, I did actually quite like it. I am seriously tempted. So do let us know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and then we'll do a part two where we set this up under the night sky. We'll explore some of the springtime galaxies. And thanks once again to my one patron, the one patron I've managed to attack, attract, Rashpal. Thank you once again for your continued support. And we'll see you for part two.